Hello and welcome to the first recorded class of the new year. I'm actually recording this in 2023 in my flat in Cambridge, um, but wherever I am in Houston waving to you all right now, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so if you're ready, remember have a glass of water nearby. We'll be using the chair today as well as the bands and ball. If you don't have a ball, consider using a cushion, um, maybe a small cushion instead. Okay, so let's get started with our um, regular warm up. So breathing in and coming down, breathing out, breathing in. Breathing in, breathing in, and one more. And let's tap, <clears throat> tapping down the arms waking up the body a bit more. And rubbing that lower back, lower back. If it's hard on your wrists, remember, you can make circles with the backs of the hands. Or you might want to try that just to see how it feels. So this is warming up the lower back and releasing some of the muscles there. And we don't always do this one, but if we pinch nicely, not, not a painful pinch, uh, but if we kind of pinch the sides of the body and the waist area and the hips, it actually does release the muscles a bit more. So great. And then give your hands a little shake, maybe some star hands, warming up the fingers, a little bit of shaking feet, and I will put the music on for Caribbean Blue. Here we go.
maybe another sip of water before we do Waka Waka Africa. So. Now, if we're not already warm, this will warm us up. Yourself up and dust yourself off and back in the saddle. You're on the front fire, everyone's watching. You know it's serious, we're getting closer. This isn't over. The pressure's off, you feel it, but you got it all. If you've made it this far, that is the end of the, the warm up, um, the main cardio section. So we probably do need another sip of water before we start to move to the balance exercises. So. Okay, so we have our famous tap tap step. So we'll do a few of these tap tap steps. You might be lucky and have a longer, <laughs> a longer corridor. I'll just go back and forth in this room a bit. Remember, try to look straight ahead.
Okay, and we can change the tightrope walk. Again, finding that nice fixed spot in front of you. You may want to put some backwards steps in. Get a chair. So it can be any type of chair. It's uh, very useful it's, if it's got a, a back, so it's not a stool, for example, that you could rest your fingers on if you need. And once we get this chair, we'll come up on the toes and down. And again, if you would like to pop a finger or a few fingers on the chair, that might help your balance or you might not need it. So just come up and down a few times and then try to hold it up for five, four, three, two, one, and soften down. Great. Maybe do a few up and downs again. And then we'll come up for five again. Coming up on the toes. I need to bring my tummy in a little bit to find that stability. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, that was a bit more than five. Coming up and down a little bit. And let's see, can we hold it for 10? So coming up on the toes, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and down, fantastic. All right, you may want to, you know, lift the heels a bit if you feel any tightness there in the calves, maybe shaking out the legs a little bit. We will, of course, be stretching them later as well. And then let's move to our side steps. So stepping to the side and back. Always an option if you're having a wobbly day. Always an option to even just put a finger on the chair. But you might not need it. And then if you'd like to challenge that balance a little more, sweeping the leg up, sweeping it up, toes pointed forwards. So you start to feel, I start to feel this hip area really starting to work with this one. Okay, fantastic. All right, so maybe massage it out, rub, rub out the hips. And let's come to our one leg stands. So coming to one side of the chair. And we'll uh, connect with one of the legs, the standing leg. Find your fixed spot to look at. Maybe don't look at me <laughs> um, unless that's directly in front of you. Um, because when we turn our head, of course, it does affect that balance. So bringing that knee up, 
and just see where you are today. Is it a good balance day? Or, you know, it might not be and that's, that's fine. We'll get there. So if it is a good balance day and you find this relatively straightforward, consider moving that knee. So the knee comes up a bit, foot shoots back, might rest that toe on the floor as it go back, as it goes back. You might not. You know, it might just stay in the air. Just see, see what you can do. And as you can probably notice, that moving balance is going to really challenge that standing leg as well. So, you know, you might want to rest in between. Take a little rest, rub it out, go again. I like to end the little small balance exercise with holding the knee up because it reminds my body where center is. And it's ending on, usually ending on a, a good note. <laughs> so yeah, let's go to the other side. Okay, so we begin again. Find that fixed point, fixed point on the wall. I like to look straight ahead. Um, some people like to look slightly up because it lifts them a bit bringing the weight onto that standing leg, bringing that knee up. And again, no shame in the hand on the chair, maybe fingers on the chair. Okay. So this may be enough and, and this is great, to be honest. If you would like to add in the moving challenge, that's that knee coming up and going back and possible popping the toe on the ground in the back and coming back up. Okay. Doing that for a little while until we end with the knee up, perhaps, finding that really stable feeling and then placing the leg down. All right. That's uh, it for the balance, so you can take a nice relieved breath. <laughs> so I thought we'd next do the sit to stand. This is a good winter warmer, and of course, great for the thighs, the legs, um, great to be able to get up and down from chairs you know, car seats, everything. Um, and yeah, just generally a very good strengthening exercise. So we hip walk. Let's imagine we're in a deep sofa and we have to hip walk to the edge of the sofa to get up, which, you know, we might have to do. And level one is to push off the chair with the hands. I then like to loosen a little bit, loosen the hips and knees before shuffling back. Once you feel the chair on the calves, then come back down and again, level one is to grab the chair behind you. And notice I didn't have to twist to look around or anything. I just felt the chair with my calves and then grabbed the chair behind me as I went down. Now hip walk again and this, yeah, has the nice added benefit of strengthening up the hip, hip muscles. Level two is to not use our hands, only using the thighs, really. There are other muscles involved, but it's mainly the thighs. And then we shuffle back and again, level two, coming back down. Okay, so I'm going to do eight of these but you're welcome to do fewer or more. <laughs> it's nice to keep track of how many of these um, you do if you are practicing it because it's a nice way to see progress. Um, so for example, if you find five very challenging, you know, see maybe in two months of doing this, maybe five's quite easy and eight is the challenge. So that can be a good way to see how strength building is going in this exercise. So I believe we're on number four. Apologies if I have lost count.
seven. I used the example of a sofa, but of course, a sofa is quite a lot harder than a firm chair. <laughs> so if you actually are on a soft chair, you know, my, uh, my sympathies, it's much easier to launch oneself off a firmer chair. I think this might have been eight, but just in case, I'm going to do one more. Fantastic. Okay, we will get the ball now. And again, if you don't have a, a ball, using a cushion or there is a, a way to do these exercises with just the resistance band, folding it up, for example, as a ball and doing this exercise, all the exercises with the rolled up band. Um, but as I have a ball, I will be using this one. So either sitting or standing for this one, your choice. This is a nice wrist strengthener. And if you do have pain in the wrist, if it's awkward doing this, point the fingers to the front because it just takes a little pressure off the wrist. But if you have no, you know, pain at all, um, fingers are pointing up with this one and try to bring the shoulders down. Very nice. And we'll also move the ball. I like to keep it in my fingertips for this one. Yeah, and another pulsing. And moving it up and down as well. And sometimes we do this one in class, not so often, but it's where we kind of knead the ball as if it's bread. So bread dough. Um, so it's really getting each finger, you know, if you are working with a cushion, you know, try to get the same concept, try to get the palm down on the cushion, each finger down. Basically, you're trying to make every muscle in the hand work. So just uh, massaging it that like that. And then with ball or cushion, bringing one finger up, each finger up in turn. And then each finger down in turn. This is quite a funny one because Sometimes people find this super <laughs> difficult and other people just find this really straightforward. I think it must depend how one's, um, just how one's brain works. Uh, so if you do find it straightforward, um, try one hand at a time. I actually find that harder. I find the other hand wants to join in. And of course, this is also helping our finger dexterity at the same time. Great. All right, again, sitting or standing, taking, you know, the cushion, the resistance band or the ball in one hand and will be a teapot. So placing the ball down, but not letting go and coming back up. You may feel it in the sides of the body, these uh, oblique, muscles. So it's a bit like pouring tea. And really, we only need to do about eight or 10 of those. It's a very targeted exercise. Now, if you are sitting, if you're standing, keep going. If you're sitting, you can see it is very much the same. So once you've done eight or 10 on both sides, let's have a little bit of inner thigh work. So again, perhaps sitting, placing the ball between the thighs and squeezing, perhaps standing, placing the ball and squeezing. So I'm doing this with my hands to show you what the thighs are doing. Basically, I'm pulsing the thighs together, squeezing the ball 
All right, great. So I thought today I would also bring squats into the class. Now we've kind of worked some of those muscles with the sit to stand, um, but squats are an excellent exercise to do, a good one to practice at home. Um, and uh, yeah, this one, yeah, unfortunately can't do sitting, so I'll move that. And there is a way to do it with the ball. So we could do it with or without the ball. Um, I'm going to do both, so you might want to join me in both and see what feels maybe most natural for your body. So squats are, first I will start without the arms. So it's funny because though it is bending the knees and it is thigh work, what I'm focusing on is shooting the bum backwards as if I'm doing sit to stand. So that's where you can see the resemblance of the exercise. So if I turn to the side, you know, I'm thinking about shooting the bum towards the back. One of the reasons it's important to do that is because we don't want our knees to go over the toes. Anytime the knees come forward over the toes, it's actually not good for the knees. It's a lot of strain on the knees. So to check it, you know, get into your squat, bum backwards, as if there's a chair you're about to sit down on. Look down, you should see your toes, um, and you can see my knees. I'm not sure you can see my toes, but my knees are a little bit further back from the toes. So if I draw a line to the ground from the knee, it's hitting mid toe. So the knees are not over the toes. Okay, so doing a few squats like that, and then doing it without the ball. You might not have had a ball, could have used a cushion, um, and try it without. So we have more range of movement without the ball. The ball makes us uh, connect with those thighs, <laughs> keep the thighs engaged. So just see, and again, from the side, it's a similar thing. All right, squats are really good work. And if you are ever cold outside, squats are a really good thing to do. Just do 10 squats and you'll warm up quickly. I'm going to show you another kind of squat, um, which is more of a one leg squat. And it does help to have a chair nearby for this. Um, and this is a very useful one for um, getting up off the ground, actually working those muscles. So let's see, I might just turn this slightly down so you can see the entire leg. Let me move this back. Okay. So we have a split stance. I'm just using the chair for balance here. One hand on the chair. A little split stance. What's going to happen is the back heel comes up and it's this kind of squat. So you can see why I've got the hand on the chair for balance, kitchen counter, you know, that also works. So again, knee is not going over the toe. The most this angle is, is, um, is a right angle, not even, you know, so don't let that knee go over the toe. You should always see the toe but the back knee is bending, and that's where most of the work is, actually, is that back leg with the heel up. And you can probably see why this helps so much in getting off, off the ground, off the floor, um, because this is an action that we do when we get off the floor. Okay, changing legs. So take enough of a stance, you know, to make it a little bit challenging. Heel comes off the ground as this knee bends. And the torso is, is technically, it's just straight. Okay. So we'll do an even number. Aim for an even number on both sides. All right, very nice. Um, I'm just going to show you getting up off the floor 
you probably have worked it out, but just to show you, when we are down on the floor, obviously we're often like this, and then we take a step forward, and then, yeah, that toe comes under um, the, the, the back foot, and yeah, often we stand, chest to the sky, maybe we push off the thigh, that's that same action we've just been working on. So yeah, a good one to practice. Okay, it's probably wise to have another sip of water before we do a little bit with the band. I've focused on a lot of leg strength in this, um, in this video. So uh, we won't do too much band and we'll be getting to the Tai Chi quite soon, but it might be worth just doing a little bit of arm work with the band. Okay, as I said in this video, I'll skip the legs, just because we've worked them quite hard already. And again, sitting or standing, we have our band exercise. So stepping on the band, and then the ice cream cone grip, Imagining a great, you know, ice cream cone, snow cone. Um, and then we have our elbow bent, and it's simply the thumb towards the shoulder. So I say simply, but as you know, a lot is going on. The abs are engaged, the tongue, good core work. All of these exercises are good postural work, helping our posture. And we're not really moving anything but that bicep. But that alone takes a certain holding of the body, a certain strength. So don't hold your breath. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Just doing a few of those. And then coming to the other side. That was about 10 repetitions. So we'll do the same on the other side. Great, and then the other one I'll do with the bands is this lovely one where we just uh, have arms straight and we're grabbing the bands with a little tension in the band, not a huge amount of tension, and it's simply opening to the sky and closing. Breathing, you know, I like to breathe in when I open the chest and out when I close, there are people who like the opposite way. Maybe try both and see what works. And with this one, we really do have to hang on to that tummy because uh, what we don't want to do is ooh, <laughs> let it all go. That's not so great for our back. So try to hang on to the stomach um, and this whole abdomen area to stand still, basically, the, 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 all the work of standing still rather than letting the, the you know, the back arch. Um, and again, yeah, great for the, for the abdomen, for the postural muscles, core muscles there. Okay. So maybe a few more of those. All right, well, okay, so this one is a strong class, <laughs> very strength challenging, but time of strength challenge is over. We're going to move to the Tai Chi and stretch now. So do you have one more glass of water? Um, we may get cooler, so if it is cold where you are, you might want to put on a jumper if you've taken it off. I'll just keep this in the corner because we'll use it for the stretch, unless you're going to the floor, which is always an option. Okay, so once we're ready, I'm massaging that lower back. 
knees slightly bent. And we'll breathe in and out. You know, I'll, I'll put some music on. You might have some music going on in the background, but uh, I'll just put some cool down. So keep uh, breathing in and out with that one. And then bird arm. And hug that tree. And then we'll move to be the wave. Changing side. Come in for the fountain. Breathing in on the up, down as we come down. a giant pearl in front of us, a giant ball, a giant pearl, and we just move back and forth as we stroke this giant pearl. Sail on Come into an upper back stretch.
So we will come to the chair or possibly the floor next. I'm going to show it on the chair, but if you are on the floor, just enjoy, <laughs> enjoy some stretches, maybe inspired by these. So first we'll do the uh, cat cow, bringing the tummy in, coming open with the shoulder, so breathing out and breathing in. I'll show you from the side. If you like the ball behind you here, feel free to use it. And then we'll continue that back relaxer by placing forearms on the thighs and just allowing that back to relax. And uh, yeah, this may feel nice. You want to stay here or go all the way down. shoulders. I'm rotating both shoulders and uh, yeah, why not coming to the side of the chair. And so for this one, it's another back relaxer. We sit up straight on the side of the chair, move to the back and come to the side. Breathing out and breathing in. Nice. And coming round to the other side. I won't turn my back to you. I'll uh, turn my chair. So sitting on the side, turning to the back. feel that stretch on the top of the foot. to the 
now try pointing that toe as far as it will go. It may not go to the floor at all, that's fine. We're just looking for that nice stretch in the top of the foot. Woo! Almost cramped there. <laughs> if it does almost cramp, probably means I've been trying too hard. So uh, just ease off it a little bit. been on the chair will come up if you're on the floor you know you may want to end on the floor take a few more stretches and that's fine we'll just do a few last stretches on the wall if you're standing with me so finding a wall which might be the hardest part um, and then it's a similar stretch to what we just did <clears throat> front leg bent back leg straight kind of pushing into that back heel like the coming of the dawn, it's us. Just holding it for a little bit. And then maybe raising and lowering the back heel. Wonderful back stretch. Taking legs apart. And allowing the back to really stretch. Walking towards the wall to come up. If you do find that very challenging, uh, you could put your hands on a windowsill or a radiator if you feel like you're slipping, um, or even just <laughs> do it over a table. Uh, I don't have a table here to show you, but you can just kind of stretch out over the table and get the table support here. I think we have to have the right sort of equipment for that one. Okay, so let's uh, stretch out that shoulder, creeping the hand up. Walking towards the wall, feeling that stretch. All right, we'll do the other side. Apologies for turning my back to you. for following this video. I hope you found it helpful, certainly earned that next piece of cake. And um, I will see you next week with another video. Um, yeah, go well. <laughs>